Hi there YouTube, Big G back in with another video and uh, I've been having a lot of fun with this little gadget over here. A Raspberry Pi. You can see I've actually got my little Raspberry Pi over here in this little Lego container. It's just one of those little cheapy cases. And this is a Raspberry Pi 3 that I've put in there. And uh, this is just going to be a, a quick little demonstration on what you need to get RetroPie up and running on a Raspberry Pi 3. Now there's a lot of videos on YouTube that will give it to you step by step in depth. I'm just going to go over very very basically what you need and what you require and I'll just show you quickly how I do it because I'll be setting up a little SD card to operate on this. So just quickly I'm just going to go through all the bits and pieces that you need. Obviously the Raspberry Pi 3 which I've got in here, the little case that I've got to protect it which is fine. You're also going to need your power supply for your Raspberry Pi 3. I recommend that you get the, you can use a cell phone um, power supply if you really want to, but I recommend getting the official Raspberry Pi 3 uh, power supply. Let me just get it out over here. There's the official one, and simply because of its amperage that it puts out. So the voltage, yes, you get cell phone ones, but they'll only put out 1 amp or 1.5 amp. And if you're going to be adding a lot of little uh, peripherals to your Raspberry Pi, I'd rather get the one that puts out 2.5 amps. So that's the original one that's over there. Something else that's very important is you're going to need a means to connect to it. And what I've gone for is a wireless, this is a really cheap wireless, uh, or genius wireless keyboard and mouse. This was really cheap, the cheapest one I could find, and it works 100% fine. And you basically then just need to plug in your little dongle into one of your USB slots on the Raspberry Pi and you're good to go. The second thing is there is controllers. Now they've got two options. One is a, I'm just using here, yeah, this is actually a PlayStation 3 um, controller or PC controller. It can work with both and it's got the USB connection. So if I want to use this to play my games on, plug it into the USB slot and you're ready to go. A better solution is using a Xbox 360 controller, a wireless one. Gives you ease of use, you don't have to have all these cables and so forth. It's a really nice, comfortable, I like the Xbox 360 controller, I prefer it over the PlayStation 3 one, so I'd like to use this. If you want to use the, the Xbox 360 option, then you need to get yourself one of these little dongles which then plug into your Raspberry Pi 3. Let me just get the cable out here. And there it is there. So it's just a USB. Uh, and also not pricey at all. And it's a, it allows you then to connect a wireless Xbox 360. You could use this. This is actually the same one that you use for your PC. You use that for your Raspberry Pi 3. So Raspberry Pi 3 with that. I connect it in. And once again good to go. Then moving on from there you're going to need a, a USB, a little flash stick, USB flash stick, got my little little Hulk over here, over here. flash stick, nice for transferring files across to your USB, uh, to your um, Raspberry Pi, especially with RetroPi. Now with RetroPi when you set this up correctly if you want to transfer games automatically across your, your MAME ROMs or whichever you know, Turbo Graphics games or ZX Spectrum games that you want to run in your emulators in RetroPi, simply put it on here, put it in the right directory, which I'll show you how to do, and plug it in. It automatically does it for you. Don't have to sit and fiddle around with file managers and so forth. The next important step is a SD card. Okay, so I've got my little SD card. I've got a 16 gig SD card. I, I like these little. I find the Samsung, I think it's a Samsung Evo, it's a, it's a cheap one, it's, it's, but it works very, very well with the Raspberry Pi 3. You can get the biggest 32 gig, but 16 gig is fine, it keeps operating system on uh, the RetroPi files that you need, as well as you can fit a lot of game files on there. You've got a lot of space to play around with on there. Okay, so in a nutshell, that's all the bits and pieces that I require, and I'm going to move on to the first step of getting your Raspberry Pi 3 up and running and that is getting your SD card, um, the files on the SD card. Okay so I've downloaded and installed SD Formatter version 4. 
um, piece of software that I'm going to require to format my SD card. The first thing is, guys, make sure that your drive letter H, like in this case, Mr. Drive Letter H, is the actual SD card um, drive letter. It's not one of your other <laughs> drives, so please don't format the wrong drive. And uh, put in your your label as you require. And in options, I'm going to set the um, format size adjustment to on to ensure that it formats. It doesn't just format one partition. It's going to format the whole the whole SD card in a quick format. Although it is a new SD card, it shouldn't have a problem. And I'm now going to format it. It's going to come up with a little message. Data may be retrieved. Okay. Do you want to continue? And do not remove. Obviously, uh, it done. So. My SD card is now formatted and uh, I'm ready to download the uh, RetroPie image and install it onto the actual card. Okay, so I've gone and I've downloaded the RetroPie file. I'll put links below as to where you can download all these things from. And I've gone and um, installed, also downloaded and installed Win32 Disk Imager and I've extracted the file that I downloaded for the RetroPie um, image file and now I'm going to find it and I'm going to where did I put my Raspberry Pi there it is there there's my image file go there I'm gonna load up the image file okay and now I want to write it to my H drive remember there and writing a physical drive can corrupt the file okay you sure you want to continue yes and away it goes so now it is now setting up the RetroPie image onto my SD card okay so I've inserted my SD card which has now been formatted and I've loaded on the RetroPie image and I'm going to be switching on my Raspberry Pi And it starts the installation process. And you met with that iconic RetroPie image. And now we let it do its thing. It automatically recognizes that I've got four gamepads detected. Okay, so now I have my keyboard and the wireless mouse connected as well as my xbox 360 so what i'm going to do now to start setting it up is uh, grab my xbox 360 switch it on so that it syncs with the uh, the wireless dongle and in order to configure it i just have to press a button to start you can see there Xbox 360 now it wants to do it. now we just go into the configuration mode so on my gamepad I'm gonna press up down left right hit the start key hit the select key a B X Y left bottom right bottom I went past it so I'm going to go back uh, okay now I'd left top you can see there it skipped the uh, right bottom so I'll go back to that one left top right top left thumb right thumb left analog up left analog down left It's already taken that so I need to it'll skip if I don't define it I need to go back and fix that right analog left analog right right analog up right analog down left right Okay, so I have a couple of keys that are not defined, which I can then define at a later stage. 
and we're into emulation station. So you can reset your controller keys anytime you want to. Well, now that I'm in emulation station, I can start navigating using my controller. So left, as you can see there, I'm moving the right, left, and when I want to go into something, let's have a look here. If I go into ports, it's got a couple of games that it comes with the system. Obviously must be and you can play Quake if you want to, or some of these other games that are there, if I want to. Now I'm into RetroPie. Let me just go back, just to show you where. So that's, there's your RetroPie system. Yeah, in RetroPie, I can go to the File Manager if I want to. And if you go into the File Manager, this will become very familiar for those of you that started in the good old days of DOS, when you had X3 Gold and X3 Pro, and so forth or what was it somebody something commander oh, I can't remember but it was this sort of same sort of system so yeah I can see my root directories for my retro par um, setup and you can see down there the one that I'm interested in is if you go down here very quickly there's a retro par, uh, folder if I go into that folder that's where I'm going to put all my BIOSes for like my main games and stuff like that then my ROMs Go into my ROMs and here you can see basically every single system that is available out there. And you can add more. And this links in nicely with that flash stick that I spoke about earlier because that's how you load games in this. So if I want to load games on my flash stick automatically into RetroPAR, I'm going to follow the same. Let me just go back and go back. I'm going to have a RetroPAR folder. If I go into the retro part on my flash stick, I will have a ROMs folder. Then I'm going to have a, let's say for example, a, let's go down here to something, a Mega Drive folder down here on that same flash stick. And then I go and dump all my ROMs into my Mega Drive folder and it will automatically update it in the same way on your retro part. So that's what we're going to do next to get some games onto our let me just go back here okay so I've plugged in my flash stick and you can see there it is over there it is a G uh, on my computer and I've gone and copied that same file system so I've got RetroPie, BIOS, configs, ROMs, I go to ROMs there are all those ROMs, all those directories that are there and I go to a particular directory and this is exactly what I've done I go to MSX because I enjoy my MSX games and you can see I've gone and copied all the ROMs in there for all the MSX games that were ever created, I'm sure. They're so small in size, you can, you can put hundreds of them there. And then just as an example, I also went and I love my Neo Geo games. You can see there, in Neo Geo, I've got Neo Geo games. And if I go to my uh, MAME for All, there's a couple of MAME for All games that are in there. So you know it's easy to browse on the net you find your different download sites you get your ROMs that you want and you copy them into these directories there they are in the normal WinRAR format that you actually get when you download them and extract them so keep them in that WinRAR format and you stick them there and yeah in my BIOS file you can see there I've copied a couple of BIOSes I've got DC for my Dreamcast BIOSes and I've got Neo Geo get your Neo Geo BIOS off the net download it stick it here into your BIOS configure it will then automatically update it okay so my flash stick is now ready I can go back now to my Raspberry Pi plug it in copy the games across and then we can start testing okay so I've stuck the flash stick into my Raspberry Pi you can see over there there it is my little Hulk flash stick stuck into the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to switch it on and let it go through its boot process and it will automatically check the directories on the flash stick and if it finds anything in those directories of ROMs it will copy them across to the SD card now keep in mind the more ROMs that you copy onto the flash stick the longer it's going to take to copy them across so yeah I've already 
I've put on a lot of Neo Geo codes, I've put on uh, or ROMs as well as uh, Mega Drive ROMs and uh, MSX ROMs and so forth. So it took it's going to take quite a while to to load up. And I also suggest that once it has loaded up, that you restart the system again. So I have allowed it to load it up already, and I've restarted the system again, like I'm doing now. So this is now on its second boot. It's booting up a lot faster too, because it doesn't have to copy all those files. It's already done it automatically. And there we are into emulation station. So using my 360 controller, I can now move around. And let's have a look at some of the stuff that I've actually gone and stuck in here. So Neo Geo. So if I push, if I go into Neo Geo, they're the Neo Geo ROMs that I've put onto the system. And MSX, they are all the MSX ROMs. Mega Drive, I've copied a whole lot of Mega Drive ROMs. Actually, how many altogether? It actually will tell you. 2,200 Mega Drive ROMs on there. And MAME, I've also stuck a couple of things in MAME and actually have a look at Neo Geo. I think that's going to be a bit easier. Oh, okay, so let's go into Neo Geo and let's try the good old Aero Fighters. So it'll go into Aero Fighters. Now it's running the FBA emulation in here and it does get a bit trickier when you want to change your different emulators but once you get used to it it's not so bad okay so I don't have any sound I'm sure you've noticed that so there I'm in the game and I can coin up there's put credits in and I can start the game as usual and I can go into the game and there I am there playing the game and it play, the Raspberry Pi 3 really plays these games really great. I haven't really found anything. That, well, then again, the ones that I emulate don't take so much horsepower. Okay, and uh, hit the start and uh, back button at the same time, and I'm out of here. So, I don't have any sound at the moment. And this is a common problem. I'm running it through HDMI. I need to force it to push sound through the HDMI. So you can go to audio. It's currently set on auto, and you can then change here between HDMI and so forth. But before we go and do that, I actually need to make a change. Let me just get out of here. I'm going to shut the system down, and I'm going to make a change to the actual config file, which then forces the HDMI to put out audio. Maybe yours works out, uh, your first time out. I've had to I've always had to force it so let's quit okay I've stuck my SD card back into the card reader and this is what it looks like so there it is my H drive these are the files that are on the um, SD card and if I go to the config file it's this one over here and I'm gonna open it with oh, sorry I don't I want to open it with notepad plus plus I find that's a far better editor than using just your notepad and there it opens my config file for my Raspberry Pi. Now I've already on and opened another config file. You can see there I've called it config file. Let's just change this here so you can actually see it. The screen gets a little bit full. So I have a config old file. And you can see here at the bottom of the config old file down here, I've got some added data compared to the other. So the stock standard one loads up and it ends up there with uh, overscan scale is equal to 1. Whereas on this one here, overscan scale is equal to 1, I've got an added these lines of code. So I'm going to copy that across. into my config text file and I am going to save that and I'm just going to zoom in so you can see exactly what I have gone and added
Okay, so there you can see I've gone and added below the Overscan scale plus one. I've gone and added in HDMI drive. Uh, is equal to 2 and HDMI underscore force underscore hot plug equal to 1 HDMI underscore force underscore edit underscore audio is equal to 1 so that will now force the Raspberry Pi to allow sound in HDMI you may not need to do this but I had to in order for myself to get sound okay so I've saved it and now I can close the files Okay, I've stuck the card back in. Let's boot the Raspberry Pi back up again. And let's see if I can get the sound working. I've taken the flash stick out. There's no need to keep it in there. If I want to add more ROMs, just copy them into the directory, shove it back in there, let it boot up with it in there. It'll copy them across. Okay, so there's my emulation station using the good old 360 controller. And if I go and put a bit of volume on here, there you can hear. I have sound. Okay, so let's just go in there. And I want to force it through the HDMI. There we are. And let's see if I've got sound in my games. Okay, let's go back to Neo Geo. Aero Fighters. Aha, uh -huh. I do have sound. The internal volume on the Raspberry Pi can be set up, and that's why then you wouldn't have to set it up so high on your LCD, but I'm not going to worry about that now, because I want to have a game of Aero Fighters. And I mean, this is such a classic. And the sound is good. But we're not going to be playing that. And just as a demonstration, guys, if you want to reset your game, just push those two buttons and it goes out of it. So basically, we are all set now to play whatever emulator you want to play. And that's RetroPie set up, guys. It's actually not that difficult. There's a lot of help on the net. You can figure your own way around it. I love playing my MSX games, so um, I'm going to say cheers from me. And uh, keep it retro, guys, while I enjoy myself a really classic game of 1942 for the MSX.